Should police officers be allowed in schools or not? Not elementary schools, high schools. And I'm also not talking about police showing up because they were called because of a fight or uh, a situation at the school and they're called to be there. I'm talking about school resource officers. So they're basically assigned to a school. They got their own private office within the school. They would report to the school daily. They got their own desk, almost like a, a substation within the school. So a few years back, they decided to get rid of the school resource officer program completely for a variety of different reasons. And some would say those reasons were political. Uh, some of the excuses made no sense to me at all, but there was some valid concerns. I was, uh, at this time, I was a school resource officer for about four years and uh, I didn't agree with the decision. I don't think there was a complete understanding of what the roles and responsibilities were of police officers in the schools. Are they primarily there for safety and security purposes? Do they get involved in, in uh, disciplinary actions within the school, within the school environment? I've had numerous people come and tell me that they felt safer when they would go to school and see the police cruiser parked at the side. Some students who have had a lot of negative interactions with the police told me they also felt safer when they went to school and saw the police cruiser at the side. Even they had safety concerns. And why not? There's a lot of talk these days about bringing the school resource officer program back. I think there's a, there's a whole movement to try to get them back in schools, to get police back in schools. I'm gonna share my thoughts with you. You may agree or disagree. If you're a police officer, you also may agree or disagree. And I'd love to, to hear your thoughts. So I'll tell you right off the bat, the years that I spent as a school resource officer, SRO, were some of the best years of my entire career and also the busiest years of my entire career. So before I transferred to the SRO position, which was run out of the street crime unit at the time by choice, I worked for youth services at a whole other division. And that was a pretty good go-to. My partner and I were primarily in plain clothes. We had a lot of flexibility, uh, but we were primarily in plain clothes. Uh, we were armed but plain clothes and no marked police cruiser. We would hang out in malls when it was busy. We'd hang out at TTC stations. We'd take the subway. Uh, our arrest and charge numbers were very high for being in that unit. Having said that, we know that high arrest numbers are not indicative of a good police officer, and there's much more to that. So back to the school resource officer position. I don't have to read you the whole mandate. Basically, our job was to build bridges and break down barriers between community the teachers, the students, and police in new and innovative ways. And having a police officer in a school uh, was a good way to do that. Now, school resource officers were not there just to enforce the law. They could also take part in the events and come up with their own initiatives that they could run at the school. It could be dance, it could be sports, academics, anything at all, really. Officers started programs involving youth at the school, and it's made a huge impact on how many of the youth view police to this day. For me, it was music. Music has always been a big part of my life. So it's no wonder that I got involved in, in programs like the So You Think You Can DJ program or the Music Not Mischief. They were fun, engaging, and allowed the police and youth to work side by side. If there was an incident at the school where police were required, the principal or whoever else in charge didn't have to pick up the phone and uh, call for a primary response unit to come into the school. They just go over to see the school resource officer. And that gave the school resource officer unique ways of of doing things because you get some officers off the road listen there's 10 15 calls and pending they have to get through calls as quick as possible i'll give you a very real example of how i dealt with something and i've mentioned this example in the past kid got his bike stolen at school and it was on camera i sit down with this guy and say listen this guy just wants his bike back this guy doesn't even want this person to be charged because what's this going to do anyways it's not going to get his bike back. He just wants his bike back. And I'm able to say to this guy, listen, by tomorrow, bring the bike back to school, come see me, and we're finished. No charges. You're done. You made a stupid mistake. Your, your marks are relatively good. You just made a dumb mistake. Let's deal with this. Kid got his bike back, and that was it. So uh, primary response officers, if they had to come in and, and deal with this, they may have laid charges or, or conditions, whatever the case is. It could have been dealt with a number of ways, but the, the fact is uh, the school resource officer has that time and has the ability. An officer on primary response is not going to say, bring it back. You got 12 hours. I'm going to come see you because they're on different shifts and they might not even be working the next day. These uh, relationships really help officers do their job. Now, most of the time, if an arrest had to be made at the school, it was done by the school resource officer calling 
a unit in from the road, usually primary response to make that arrest. And it was not done by the school resource officer. This didn't go over very well with some of the officers who had to come and make the arrest, but that is completely understandable. Having been the officer who was also called to the school to make an arrest when a cop was there, who was perfectly able uh, to do it, but did not make the arrest, I understand the frustration. I get it. I've been there. School resource officers would also assist with investigations, whether it's with the police service or the school board. I learned a lot too. And to be honest, I have the students to thank for the social media success that I've had because I was paying attention to them and I got involved in these things at an early stage. That's all. That's what the secret is. Just get involved in whatever platform is at an early stage and grow with that platform. I remember Twitter was being used by the students and it was st still looked down upon by media corporations and everything else, media corporations. Um, they would communicate with one another if there was somebody you know, selling weed within the school. I was able to look at Twitter because I was monitoring it and they used to tweet to everybody else in the school, okay, cops heading down this hallway, he went this way, he went this way, so some of the kids would head out the, the other direction. I mean, really, when you think about it, it was brilliant back in the day. I dealt with some kids who came from a very dysfunctional family or grew up in a foster care system where there was little or no support in a history of different types of abuse. Uh, they would show up late, but the fact that they showed up to school at all is a testament in itself. There was one student who was showing up late for a couple of days, and uh, I later learned that his mother had once again gone missing. Uh, she was a drug addict and would leave them alone for days at a time. And this student, would uh, help his younger sister get ready for daycare, drop her off, and then come to school. So instead of police just being called and dealing with the call quickly, the school resource officers would have the ability to work with teachers, with the school board and guidance counselors to come up with some sort of plan that was beneficial to everybody involved. I could give so many examples, but I'm thankful for those relationships that last till this day. So having said all that, we know it's not always like that. We know that there's been some failures along the way that should never have taken place. I did a podcast about police officers being in schools. And at the end of the podcast, I was asked what my advice would be to officers who may consider becoming school resource officers in the future. And my biggest piece of advice, check your ego at the door. You're going to be tested while walking down the hall. People are going to call you names, not to your face, but you're going to hear things. People will make gestures. They may even challenge you. People say and do dumb things when they're growing up. They're still trying to figure out where they are and where they stand on this earth. And it doesn't mean that they're losers or bad kids. Listen, I did stupid and foolish things as a teenager myself, and I'm sure you have. Now, if they're making threats, yeah, you have a case. But if they're just saying stupid things to try to impress their friends and maybe using words against you that I'm not going to use and your first instinct is to, you know, kind of throw up arms or bring up the fists and challenge them back, then listen, step back. That job is not for you. It's got to be a police officer who knows that and understands that before you go in. A lot of the youth you deal with have simply been misguided and I'm not making excuses here, but there are youth who have not had one positive role model in their lives, directly in their lives for their entire life. Now, historically, and I'm not saying it's like this for everybody, police officers who wanted to get off the road or stop work and shift work would choose a Monday to Friday position. And the school resource officer was a Monday to Friday position. So it was an option. But you can see why that might not be a good idea. If you're an officer and you're on primary response, you're going from call to call to call, and you just want to change a pace, maybe you need a change of pace and there's nothing wrong with that, then certainly depending on what school you get, uh, you're going to be just as busy. So it goes back to placing officers in those positions that know the challenges, they understand the challenges, and they want to be there. When the program was shut down, I thought it was a shame. And I spoke to two principals at that time, and they advised me that every other principal that they knew had nothing but good things to say about the school resource officer program, and that they actually voted to keep the program in place. It was out of their hands, and... Uh, Ultimately, it was, uh, it was shot down. So, if you're still here, thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate you sticking around, listening to my rants. Uh, 
if you want to add to the conversation, please feel free to leave a comment. I do read every comment and I respond when it's appropriate to do so. And uh, or if you have an idea for another video, it's something you want me to cover, please let me know. Uh, besides that, be safe out there, look after one another, and perhaps we will see you again.